all of my training is based on, first of all, making me a better person, like helping my brain be clear and make me make better decisions and be better for my kids and better for my wife, but for sport too, like to be good, to be able to continue to do the thing that I really like, to, that I really want to be doing, which is foiling. When I woke up, very confused, she said, you almost died last night. In fact, no one can believe you were alive. I went into the games not knowing what was coming. As humans, we just hate uncertainty. You just sense that it was out there. You have to start somewhere. We're all programmed to push ourselves even farther. This is On The X, an Ironclad original. Hey everybody, welcome to On The X. I'm Chris Irwin, and today my guest is Laird Hamilton. Most people know Laird as one of the best, if not the best, big wave surfer of all time. But he's also an innovator and pioneer in water sports, helping to invent toe-in and foil surfing. He's an entrepreneur behind numerous companies, including Laird Superfood, which is bringing his nutrition expertise to homes around the world. He and his wife, Gabby Reese, also run XBT, a unique physical training and lifestyle program for people of all fitness levels. And he's the author of Force of Nature and Life Rider. Regarding his accomplishments, Laird is exceptionally humble and authentic in everything he does, and I think you'll hear that in our discussion. He's really charted his own path, regardless of what anyone else thought, and that journey has given him a breadth of experience and knowledge that's somewhat unparalleled regarding how to live. During our conversation, we dive into his upbringing, fitness, nutrition, business, and of course, surfing. So here we go with Laird Hamilton on The X. There's a lot of ways I could go with this, obviously, with your background and and we go deep in surfing and everything. But there's something you brought up there that I'm kind of curious about because you write about it and in your books and I'm and in other content as well, is this into the intuition thing. So like the thinking versus feeling organism. You would refer to it as an organism, I think, based on the stuff i've I've read from you, which I like. like what we do what do we do with the organism, right? Yeah. I'm curious your cut on this, like, because I'm somebody who I think I've always come traditionally come at things with a very empirical mindset, like a very like thinking, like, you know, process oriented and have only recently kind of veered more into this. Well, you know, I think there might be something to this kind of intuition stuff as well, wherever that comes from, like whatever that mm. is. Mm. And I'm curious your cut on it. Um, because I think it also stems, the other thing I, I, I really latched onto in your writing was I'm also some, like, I'm big on mind orientation, like sort of the mind being the, the driver. And there's other people out there that are sort of like the body's the driver, like use the body to hack the mind. The thing I read from you is, is this heart centered thing. Like it all kind of comes back to your heart whatever that is, right? Whether that's the sort of the energy aspect of it or the physical. So I'm, I'm kind of wrapping that all together. Like, you know, you're cut on that. Like wh how you, pardon the pun, surf that, surf the line between thinking, intuiting, you know, and where that comes back to in your body as well. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I mean, to, 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 to simplify that and not get too, kind of ethereal or but you know it, it, when you think about the 10,000 hours and you think about when you've done things long enough that they become intuitive and you're not thinking consciously I think the conscious mind is is obviously is slow reactionary it's like it, if you're saying uh you know I need to turn now or I need to do this now or if you're actually at the point where you're in in at that level you're just you're gonna you're going to crash. You're just not going to, you're, you need to be feeling it more. And, and that, I mean, it's, you know, it seems like obviously those things overlap, you know, the, the, the overlap, the, the, the hours of, 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 uh, skill in, you know, practice, the hours of practice, make it become, make it become intuitive, right. Make it become unconscious, make it become something that, uh, that you that you feel. I mean, you know, I always, I, listen, I just, you can sense when there's danger, mm -hmm. you know, and you, this ain't your body. This is, this is something else. I mean, this is something that's connected to your body to help you. I, I think that if we were left to our completely to our conscious mind, that, that we would, we would never survive that we would, we would just not, that we would not be able to survive that we have, that we've had to rely on our, on our, 
intuition and our instincts and the feeling like what did why did they say i had a gut feeling right. like yeah i had a gut feeling like i could feel something around that corner like i know when there's a shark in the water i just i can feel it i just mm -hmm. i go oh you know i've had i've had situations where i just go you know i just i feel uncomfortable right now and i think there's a i just feel like there's a shark around and i'll go in and then later in the day somebody will go oh yeah they saw a giant shark i go I could feel that thing. Mm -hmm. I knew that thing was out there. I could just sense that it was out there. I didn't see it. I didn't, I didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't have any other thing other than I just intuitively could sense it was there. And so I, I have the, you know, I have a, I mean, I feel like the, the body is the vehicle, right? The body is the, that's the car. Uh, it's not the electronics. It's not the, it's not the motor. I mean, okay. It's the motor, but it's not the, it's not the control it's not the controlling system. It's not the system that, you know, I, I mean, I think what they're, I mean, we, we see it in our, in our training. We see when people are strong-minded, you can take some woman, a mom, housewife come in and she can just, you know, her ability in the heat and the ice in the, in the deep end and all this, she can just, she, she just is strong. And then I can see big, strong, tough guy come in and just be like, having none of it not 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 and, and it just it's so i always go back to you know that the where the mind goes the body will follow mm -hmm. like where the mind i mean where the mind goes and you need a certain physicality to okay to go out and catch a wave and be able to endure a wipeout and all that stuff you got to physically you're going to need some some things to be able to do that and is there stuff in it, it, like you found from a training perspective or whatever it may be like a practice perspective that helps with that side of things, right? Like the being more intuitive aspect of it. It's something that theoretically should just be, you know, it's an instinct, right? So it's just like built into us, but I feel like so much of us have gotten away from it. Like it's like we either ignore it, right. Or we just, we don't know it's there or we, or we actively push against it almost. Right. So you know, if we're not doing something that's surfing, like where we're out connected with nature, or if like we live in a, like if you're in New York city or something right, like that, are there things you've found to help people bring that side more into their lives? Like to feel that more in just like an everyday, everyday life? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I think, uh, bringing awareness to it, bringing attention to it and responding to it. Like, like you, you know, it's a practice. So, and I use an analogy of you're walking down the street and there's a guy on a ladder and you see the guy up in the ladder and you're like, and you see the bottom of the ladder and you're like, well, that thing's kind of on a spot that looks like if that slips and that guy keeps doing what he's doing, he's going to fall off the ladder. And, and then you don't think any of it and you just anything of it and you walk down and then you hear, oh, the, you heard about the guy on the ladder, he fell off. So the next time you're by the ladder, you're like, hey, you know what? You see it, you get that feeling. You're like, huh? And you go, hey, you know, you might, it looks a little shaky down here, like send out the warning, but, but, and I, and I, you know, go off of those intuitions and those instincts and use and use them, respond to them. And because I think that's a cultivation, right? Obviously we've eliminated the need for that. I mean, you, in the military, you need it. You, it's a, it's a thing you, and it's going to separate you from the other guys and mm -hmm. the guys that make it and guys that don't make it in certain situations will be the guys that, that had it and used it and knew and, 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 and it, you know, and survive from it. And in, and okay. In the ocean, you're going to have situations where you're going to need to know it's like being in the jungle and kind of having a sense of, Oh, just, you know, I need to be more aware. Cause I think it, I think the environment demands that of us, especially any aggressive, any, any environment that, 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 that no, I wouldn't say creates, but any, any environment that has things that are, are uh, situations or things that can, can be dangerous. Right. Yeah. So we, there's a certain danger to the environment naturally, whatever that is. I think that makes us, that turns that on more than it would be just, you know, we've, we've eliminated anything dangerous in, in, in the, in, in our society, in the city, there's not worrying about stepping on a snake or a shark eating you or somebody shooting at you. Maybe, maybe you have to worry a little bit about that. And probably like when you go into some place where gangs are, those guys probably have a lot of that. Yep. They probably had a lot of that, like, you know, that, that extra sensory uh ability because they're using it and so i think the use of it i think the uh, conscious awareness 
to it that it it's real. Like when you get that intuition, you get a feeling, whatever it is, call your friend. I had this feeling. I thought I thought about you. I had a dream. I mean, I, I have, you know, Gabby, I always use her because, you know, there's a reason why they call it a woman's intuition. Mm. They don't call it a man's intuition. Yeah, that's they true. call it a woman's and you know, and you're, and Never she says to you, Hey, you know, I don't know, but be careful today. I had a feeling I'm like, okay, like go on high alert because it's real that that's a, that's real. And that's, that's powerful. And so when you start to cultivate that, I think you get better at it. You get better at that. And how do you temper it with, because it can backfire on you too, right? Like, I mean, we can let our emotions or our instincts maybe run away from us in the form of fear and anxiety, right? Like that can overwhelm you to the point where it incapacitates you. And certainly for someone like you, who you, you put yourself in sort of in death defying situations where it's perfectly rational to be completely terrified. So how do you, how do you deal with that? Like, I'm curious both from sort of a surfing perspective of like, you know, when you're out there and there's some, whatever it is, 50, 60 foot wave behind you that clearly can kill you. Um, how you control that in that moment. And then again, like just kind of like for the rest of us that, that aren't able to do that, you know, how we kind of, temper that in, in other situations where it's, where it's maybe not, you know, not, there's no real imminent danger there, but we, we, we get that feeling, right? Like where it's, it can kind of like run away from us. You know, and I, I, well, I think there's a separation between those two things. I think there's that voice that runs all the, the garb, you know, runs all the garbage that, yeah. Hey, da, 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 this, and you gotta be careful of that. And you gotta, you know, and all that, all that anxiety based kind of chatter, Yep. And then the actual real intuition, the real, hey, like these real, and and because there's a difference between those two. Those are, you know, I was talking, I mean, and in a way, I, I'll, I'll talk about different kinds of fear, you know, a fear that makes you more alert and makes you make better decisions. That's good fear. Mm -hmm. Now there's bad fear, which is makes you freeze up and maybe, and be hasty to make the wrong decision. And so I think that those are really, those are different things. I think there's a different thing between your intuition and then this anxiety that you, uh, that you, you know, I mean, we have some sayings like, you know, don't to react to what hasn't happened yet. Yep, for I sure. mean, it's like, you know, cause then you'll have to make a, you'll have to react to the reaction that you had right. versus the, and I use a little wave. I use a scenario where you're paddling and a little tiny ripple is coming from a boat and a, and a beginner will always do this. They'll see the wave coming and it hasn't even gotten to them. And all of a sudden they start like responding to that wave it hasn't even hit up it like instead of just waiting until it hits you and then you roll with it and 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 respond to the to the movement but i do really believe there's a big separation between or at least my experience is that chatter voice that thing that's just running all the all the all the you know that's that's that really fuels anxiety and then just those intuitions of hey be aware around this next corner or you know what, that, that, that thing, just, just those, that, that voice that, that is, it's different than the other, than the other, uh, the intuitive part is different than this other chatter, this yeah. other, this other chatter that happens that, that really builds anxiety. And I think it's the ability to block out that chatter or at least be, be realistic about what that is, that that's actually just a thing to try to keep you safe. So it's going to run all these scenarios, which, so you go, oh yeah, that's just a mechanism. That's not me. That voice that you think is you, isn't you, right? It's not you. Yeah. It's not you. It's a, it's this other mechanism that's trying to keep you safe because it doesn't want to rely on your consciousness because you're just not, we're, none of us are that, I mean, we just can't, we're, we're not that smart in that sense. So we're, so yeah. we're like, you know what? And that's like the reptilian part of the brain. It's like, hey, it's you're not smart enough to be consciously able to keep yourself alive. So I'm going to yes. step in and give you the rhetoric that makes you hurry up and, you know, hide in your closet kind of thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Now, has that ever been, I mean, given the things you've done, has that ever been an issue for, you know, again, when you, when you started doing what you do and you're out there in these was was anxiety or fear ever an issue? Or are you just somebody who's like, I'm good, I'm fearless type of type of no, thing? just no, no, because I think I, I mean honestly, fear is 
assessment. You know, I, I think when somebody like there was a campaign used to be a campaign in certain, you know, in, in action sports where it was like the no, no fear, you know? Yeah, and I'm right. like, yeah, I'm like, no fear. I go, that's ignorance for me. I go, if you're saying you're not scared, that's stupid. Like I would be like, you're not scared if you're flying, a, you know, 150 feet on a motorbike and you're trying to land between two trash cans on a rail and either way on the right or the left is, you know, is, is hospitalization or death you know, are you riding a giant wave or there's a shark or what? I mean, I think that that's honest, right? That's being realistic about your, you know, good assessment, but then it's, what is that energy that you use? How do you take that, that fear? You know, I, I always say, like, if you watch a gazelle, a gazelle is, I mean, the cheetah is the fastest animal in the world and the gazelle gets away yep. a lot. Yep. Like they get away a lot. So that's what fear can do. Fear can make you strong can make a, you know, a mom lift a car. I mean, it can make you, uh, your assessment go into hyper, hyperspace. So fear is great when harnessed like that, or in, unless you just seize up and, you know, the deer in the headlight and you, and you just get run over. So um, th I think there is definitely, you know, fear is a tool. I, I think I was, have been fortunate in my, in growing up, having been scared a lot and consistently mm -hmm. as a young person, especially in the ocean, uh, on the land, but on the, but in the ocean, uh, and, and to a point where I, I think that I cultivated a relationship with it. So I mm -hmm. over time, because it, you know, I always say, you think you're scared, like a scary movie is always scarier for a child. Yeah. So you're the, you're in the most vulnerable time of, if you're in, in, a, in the fear state when you're young. Right. And then you have a, and then you turn into, uh, you know, you kind of, what do they say when the dolphins are attacked they put the they put the moms and the babies in the middle the adults around and then the very outside is young adolescent male yep. you know it's because they're the fearless ones right they're 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 the fearless ones but there's so there's a certain uh ability that we have some of us have to turn that off too to be like hey okay cool but i'm you know and whether it's you've never been hurt and you think you're invincible or or you're or you just have a mechanism. I think males, I think males specifically, um, and, and a certain percentage of males have an ability to be able to just to like, turn that off, like be like, turn that, mm -hmm. turn the, turn the doubt off and, and, and kind of, you know, kind of throw yourself into it, you know, to throw and, and, uh, but I think for myself growing up, being scared a lot, uh, and then uh, cultivating a relationship with it. You know, if you're a little kid and you're stuck in a riptide and no one's around and you're there flipping out and being scared, isn't going to get you back in. Right. Yep. You realize that that's probably going to make it a problem actually. So you learn how to, you know, you learn how to do some things in that state. One of them is, you know, stop like, a, like assess, like, like really kind of, look at what's going on and where you are to make a decision to try to get yourself out of that situation. And, and instead of continuing to speed into it, you know, so I think slowing down at times can be a, can, that's always worked uh, well. But again, I think, I think my upbringing and, and all of those times uh, that I I've had help, help me have a better relationship with it. Yeah. I learned a lot about that in your, in your first book. Um, so I think like a lot of people, like I knew who you were and I know you're, you're kind of like overall body of work, but I didn't know a, a lot of the details about you. And so I, your first book was really interesting. I, 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 it was sort of like part Marcus Aurelius meditations, part Julia child, joy of cooking, part Arnold Schwarzenegger encyclopedia of modern bodybuilding. And like, or like a surfing book. I don't know what the, like, if there's a leading, but it was kind of like all that wrapped that together. Sounds like my life, just every direct, which hat today. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know, um, it's sort of like a life's life's little instruction book kind of thing. Yeah. Um, or at least my experience. <laughs> yeah. 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 Of course. Like coming from your yeah. perspective, but that's what people want to hear. Right. I mean, yeah. given what you've done, but, but there was a piece towards the end where you, you were talking about your childhood and I'm glad you kind of brought that up, which, which I thought was super interesting. Um, about specifically like like your mom and like she took you to well first of all you moved to Hawaii when you were like five six years old something like that oh months months old oh months old okay okay months old wrong. yeah okay. she took me from I was born in San Francisco and then my mom as soon as she could fly like I was I was in Hawaii within the first 
I mean, we came back and forth a couple of times, but she took me as a baby. And what was the impetus that brought you there? What, what? I think, you know, it was the sixties and my mom wanted to get away from, you know, it was Vietnam. It was, it was Woodstock. It was, you know, rat race, get away from the thing. There was a whole like kind of, uh, and that was Hawaii represented paradise that, you know, you're in California Uh and there's all this kind of friction. And then it's like, that's paradise. Right. So for the, the, and, and my, my real father was, uh, was it in the, in the, in, in nowhere to be found. So my mom was like, going to make a new life. I think she had a heavy home family life and it was, it just seemed like everything led um, to her going. And so my mom was a, a very courageous woman. My mom was, my mom was, my mom would stand up to most a- anyone and anything and with, 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 with no fear. Yeah. <laughs> I well, would say. and so the, the things that I found, I mean, one was you, it definitely talks about you being, like an outsider to some extent, right? Like in a, in a school where no one looks like you yeah. and you've got to kind of like cut your teeth that way and like, st- you know, get in fights and that kind of thing. Um, and I'm just curious about how much, and and then also the other thing was she like took you to Afghanistan when you were 10 years old or something like that. Right. Like, a, and the, I just these places where like a very abnormal thing, I think for most abnormal. Westerners, right. <laughs> So I'm yes. just, the question I kind of want to get to there is one, what was that experience like? But two, you know, how much of that do you reflect on in terms of really shaping the way things ended up for you? Right. Because I think it's sort of a nature versus nurture question of, I think you, you have given, been given some physical gifts that allow you to do what you've been able to do. But some of it too, is just the environment you were thrown into, right. And what and the adversity you had to deal with. And I'm just kind of curious, reflecting back on things, you know, how you look at that. Right. And in terms of shaping where you ended up. Well, I wouldn't wish it on anybody. I, I wouldn't wish it on anybody, but I, it is the thing that has shaped me. It's, it's, there's no doubt that there's, that's the thing that all those things that, that going through at the time were not fun. They were, there was nothing enjoying it. There's no enjoyment about it. Uh, but when I look at, first of all, where, you know, maybe the, the man, you know, the, the dad, I become the husband, I become the, 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 those things that I, I attribute, I attribute it, you know, I attribute that, that foundation to my appreciation for, you know, what, what, first of all, what I've been able to do, where, where I am, what, you know, and, 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 uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change one thing. I wouldn't, if I could, they say, "Oh, go back." I, there's not one thing because I wouldn't want to change one a, a possibility of not me me not being where I am today. Yeah. I wouldn't if 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 one of those things were you know that I went through in my life, and I and I'm and I never it's never woe me. It's more just like factual stuff. Like it's like I I grew up like a savage in a way. Like I grew up in a pig farm killing pigs with you know living with you know a, a bunch of wild Indians, and so it's kind of like you know, you're, you're, you go, you're raised by the Indians. It's you're, you're going to be an Indian. They're like, yeah, regardless of your appearance. And so I wouldn't change that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't change a, th- a thing about that. And do you think you would have found that? Like, do you think you would have found surfing had you grown up somewhere else? Or do you think it's like so much of that rests on where you grew up? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I my, I mean, my, my real father surfed. My stepdad surfed. Yep. My mom was from Southern California. She knew Gidget the surf. Like we oh, come yeah. from, a, All right. you know. Yeah. So my mom was from uh, down in Encinitas and Cardiff yep. area. So yep. her friends were surf filmmakers. I mean, surf. We were around surfing. Um, I, I think that had I grown up in California, I would definitely be a different person. And I would. And I don't know. I, I do think that there's a certain. You know, my stepdad said big wave riders are born and not made, mm. you know, that you, that you, that you're born with certain things that you need to be that you, and that's why, you know, you have guys coming from, you know, the middle of the country come from Texas and they become big wave riders because they just have a, you know, and I think Mark Davini talks about it too. Like, you know, about attributes, right? You talk about attributes, you can teach skills, but you can't teach attributes. Mm-hmm. And so maybe we're born with certain attributes uh, but 
I, I yeah, I, I I think I had a, a natural inclining uh, drawn to danger. I think I, I I don't know if I would I might be incarcerated at this point. Um, <laughs> you know, I might have I might have been in the military. There was a very yeah, good I chance. About, my, I my, about my, that. Yeah. my father was my my uncle was the sergeant of the stockade at Camp Pendleton, Bulldog Drummond. So I have I have military people in my background. I have scientists in my background, like you know, some uh scientific uh things. I the military was would would, would have probably been very uh you know, I, I would have probably been a, a good a good soldier, uh, just because of I think I have a natural, uh, I'm like a dog with a bone. I mean, I think with the discipline and certain things that I'm, you know, other than I don't like to be told what to do, but that's probably a good foundation to start with. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. No, I know that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the one thing that's, that I think about too. Is like, I don't know. I think you're kind of a little bit of fuck you to authorities. Right. So, um, so, so at what point, so you started surfing as a kid, but what, at what point were you like, this is it for me? this is the path I'm going to go. And this is really where I want to, like, I can even make a career out of this. And knowing too, that at some point you, you also said, I'm not competing in this. To me, this isn't about competition. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, it started young, I think obnoxiously young from what I hear. I get stories when I just run around and I tell adults, I'm going to be the best and blah, 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 blah. Okay. And I, so I had a certain kind of cockiness about it, probably when I look back at it, it's because I was scared, yep. you know, I was, I was scared because that's usually where that comes from. But, uh, but I definitely have, was pretty clear uh, that I was going to do something and be someone in uh, whatever that means in surfing at a, at a young, at a young, uh, at a young age. So I, I didn't know the path. I wasn't sure the route uh it wasn't clear like you're going to go there and do this and then that's going to happen and you'll be the world champ and all that stuff mine wasn't clear like that um i just intuitively knew uh that i was going to i was going to you know i was going to do something i was yeah. i just i had a, a a vision that and and uh my mom was pretty uh i think my first time my mom saw me surf when she was she was about no, I think I was 37 or 35. So what? my mom, really? my mom never saw me surf until I was probably 35 years old. And I was on Maui. She came to visit. She, and I was surfing Jaws at the time. And of course, it, you imagine what Jaws is doing. Some, you know, who knows how big it was. Yeah. Somebody said to my mom, they told me the story. Your mom was on the cliff. We said, Hey, Laird, here's Laird on a wave. And she went and she just looked and she goes, Oh, oh my God, I can't watch and just turn around and walked away. So my mom really, my mom was really about, you know, about, uh, how important it was to be a good person yeah. and, uh, and how she didn't care about what you did, like just do it with all the integrity and all the, all the will, you know, do it the best you can. She goes, I don't care if you sweep this, sweep the streets, but do it the best, you know, do it with, with dignity and, and treat people evenly, the, the peasant, the King, everybody, you know, she just had some moral uh, things that were important that the surfing didn't really, I remember I made the covers of National Geographic and she used to collect it. And I was, and it was like, in her mind, like, wow, I made it, you know? <laughs> she, yeah. I mean, like I said, at the end of that book, it was just, it struck me. It was one of the, like, I had a bat, I was listening to it. Um, I was actually on the beach in San Diego attempting to surf. I was on vacation and I'm, I'm a terrible surfer, but I was, I was out there trying. And in between I was listening to the book and I actually had to back that part up about your mom because it was just so like heartfelt. There was so much emotion in the, in the words there. And, um, and just, she just seemed like an extraordinary person. Did, was she somebody who taught by her actions, by her words, by both? And I'm really yeah. curious on this trip to like, let's make a 10 year old to Afghanistan too. It just seems like a. Seriously. Yeah. My mom, well, my mom was, uh, you know, a cultivator of, of imagination. Mm -hmm. So she read me a lot of books as a child. When I was young, she read me a lot of, you know, the tr Lord of the Rings trilogy, Jonathan Livingston Seagull, Dune, Dune yeah, like all these, yeah. all these crazy books. And, and my mom worked 16 hours a, a day, six days a week, and still managed to do the laundry at a laundry mat and, 
and make meals and and shop and i mean she just was i mean i always say that my brother and i probably drove her to an early grave you know in in a way because she just she was always so worried right because mm -hmm. that's what moms do right they just they always worry about what you know and 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 i gave her reason to worry. So she was always like, Oh, you made it to six. Oh my gosh, you're seven, you're 10. You're, I mean, every year was like a monumental thing that I like made it another year without either dying or just being permanently uh, injured. And so uh, she had a lot of worry that way, but my mom, my mother as a person, just her, her wit, her, her, uh, which first of all, she was a profuse reader. She would just read, she could read a, she could read, a, you know, she'd start Friday night and she'd read a book that was yep. beyond my mom is the exact same thick way. and done on Monday. Way. Like yep. she just, her consumption of information and, you know, all of her. So her, her, her Scrabble skills were unsurpassed. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> she'd read the dictionary and stuff. So yep. that way, in that way, she was, she, my mom was a very intelligent woman and, and, and uh, courageous other than just being, you know, worrying a lot. That was her, her, yeah. her one thing, but she did lead, uh, by, by example, you know, she, 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 uh, yeah, she just, she was someone that, that I was fortunate to be able to have at least one, you know, well, to, first of all, to have anybody like that in your life, no matter who you are, it was pretty, I was fortunate and, um, uh, she was like the town therapist. She couldn't carry a relationship out, you know, well herself until the end of her life. But, mm -hmm. but she should, she gave a lot of people therapy, but, uh, but she would take in a stray dog, you know, she was the, take the stray dogs in and feed them. And I always said she, she would, you know, she raised a, uh, two sons and a few men. And then also, you know, would, would, uh, she would, she would, you know, she would take care of this, any stray ant. she'd find some animal on the road and bring it home and nurse it back to life. And so she had some, her values were, I mean, she was raised in the Catholic church. I think Catholic like nuns and slap your wrist. And she didn't put any religious thing on us because she felt that it was a personal thing and that we would, you know, we mm -hmm. would arrive, uh, on our own to that, that that wasn't something because she had had it you know, kind of beaten into her uh, in her youth. Um, but she lived, you know, you people profess to be religious with their words, but then then they don't with their deeds. And she would conduct herself religious. She she lived by the 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 the, the you know the the guidance of of the word, you know. So that was I think that was the and I and you could you knew that you could tell that that my yeah. mom was that way. It just, it's one of these things that strikes me. I was talking to, um, to Matt Frazier. I don't know if you know Matt, but he's, he's a CrossFit games, probably most dominant athlete, athlete in CrossFit. I know of him. And his, um, and he's, it's just sort of similar of like his, his dad, his parents being so supportive of him and like doing, it's just one of these things that like just speaks to me about the importance of mentorship out there of like, you know, these days, especially, I think we focus so much on, there's so much like do this for yourself, individualism, right? Like take care of yourself, self-care and da, 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 da. And I think sometimes we forget that it is like figuring out, finding somebody to mentor, whether it's your own kids or like a friend or a relative or something. It's just so, it can have such an impact on not only you and them, but the world. And I think that that's so important, you know? Um, well, that's the, you know, the, in, in uh, Adlerian philosophy, that's the number, that's the only way through fulfillment is to be of service. And right. so, I mean, a, a woman has a, a built-in ability because she could be a mother. And so there's no greater form of service. They have it built in. Guys, for men, it's a little more difficult for us to to do that. And because it's always about, you know, accumulation and what can I do and what can I get and all of those things, I think that's overlooked. But when you start doing it, I think one thing about Hawaii and raised, being raised in Hawaii with the uh, kind of the aloha the aloha spirit and, and the way that that you conduct yourself in the traditional Hawaiian kind of culture is is, is it's it's very generous, very mm -hmm. very generous, very very uh, giving, and they even have uh, like what they have in Afghanistan. They call Hanai, which means they take you into the family, and once you're accepted, 
you become yep. one of the family members. Right. It's like, and there, and then once you're one of the members, the family defends you like it's like you're, like you're the blood. They yep. send you, and it's pretty. Uh, that is a, a very beautiful. I think some of those things, those gifts that I got from being raised in Hawaii and that culture have gone with me for my whole life. And, and, and I, and I think that sharing, uh, which ultimately, uh, mentorship is sharing of your time and your, and your experiences. I go, I don't know too many things greater than that. You know, it's it, for me, I know that to be true. I think we've always, uh, I've always done it kind of anyway, but as I've gone, I've gotten to do it. I've been able to do it more and more. And I, I feel like that's our, you kind of have an obligation. I feel like, yeah. I think it's, I mean, it's great to act like it's, uh, like it's an option, but it's, it's, it's not you, you, you're, I think you're required to, I've been mentored too. Um, if I can mentor too, I, I think that there, you don't, it's kind of like, it's, you have a responsibility to pass it down yeah, you just have a, you just, and you need to look at it like that. Yeah, absolutely. So just again, just, I, just cause I want to hear a little bit of the details, just that Afghanistan trip, like what, what brought that on and what was that? Well, my mom had a, had a friend. So she, my mom had a friend that, that was going to take a journey from Paris, uh, and drive to, uh, Bombay. Mm -hmm. So to Mumbai, India uh, yep. for six weeks. And, uh, and she, she intuitively knew that travel is probably the most kind of, uh, it, I would say, educational but also in in you know kind of formative way to 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 get experience and growth and so she took me on uh, with her so it was me her and her friend and then we drove from paris uh through the old silk road through the kyber pass yep. um and then through uh iran iraq like everywhere it was before the it was right before i want to say the iran called contra or the right before the whole break thing broke out where you could still drive that way. I had my 11th birthday, um, in Afghanistan. Uh, you know, we, we slept in, uh, Afghan towns. The, the, the guy had, uh, my mom's friend had some Afghanis that he knew. So we went and slept in a village that had big walls around it, that they closed the doors of the, of the, of both ends of the town because of the packs of wild dogs that were that if you got caught outside that city, you'd be eaten. And, you know, there was guys walking with boomerangs and people that had gotten their hand cut off from, cause of stealing. And you, you know, you have a wiping hand and an eating hand. And so they cut your eating hand off if you steal, and then you only have a wiping hand and then they eat communally. So you're not, you're kind of banished. You become an outcast and guys are in the middle of nowhere, walking with boomerangs, you know, trying to, to live and, I'm like, well, what happens to that guy at night with the dogs come? Like, what, you know, like, like just all of that. So, and, and just, you know, meet a, I met a boy that, and, and we had an interpreter and he was a similar age to me, but he, and I had my birthday. So my 11th birthday was there yeah. and, and we were trying to explain years and he was moons old. Oh, yeah. So he was a, he was 120 moons old, yep. which means he was like 10. And so, uh, just all of that. And then of course, going to India after, uh, but just all of those uh, coming from Hawaii, uh, you know, and then California, and then just seeing that, that right. Having that kind of exposure uh, definitely kind of fed into, you know, not only my imagination, but just that it was a big world out yeah. there. And there was a lot of people doing a lot of different things yeah, and maybe it helped me kind of hone into, hey, I got I, I got to work on you know, w what I where I am and what I can do, like yeah. like what I deal, what I what I'm fortunate to be able to to do, and you know, and obviously surfing was one of those, and you know, cleaning the food off your plate. I never had a problem with that anyway, but it was like, yeah, food is good. You know, you go to India and people are starving and yeah. you're like, yeah. why don't they just feed these people, these cows? I mean, these cows are eating all these food out of these things. And they're like, yeah, that doesn't work yeah, like that. Work Those here. cows are sacred. Right. I'm like, this cows are sacred and they can just go in the store and eat all the food, but the people are starving. And like, so it was just, you know, all that stuff, I think that hits you when you're, especially when you're younger yeah. like that, you you just get a different perspective. No, you're totally. Just like, uh huh. You're you're you open up your 
your vision a little bit. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I just think it's one of those things. I mean, like, obviously not everybody has that opportunity, but it's one of those things like, you know, if you can do it, my son is actually just getting back tonight from two, about two weeks in Europe. Um, And not as culturally different as a place like Afghanistan from the United States, but still just one of those things of like, you need, it's a band trip. He's only like 300 kids doing like playing music around Europe. And it's just one of those things like just getting that perspective of not everybody lives like us. People, oh. have different, you know, thoughts, different beliefs, different, you know, societal norms, behaviorisms, whatever it may be. And it's just, I think it's so important if people can do it. Um, and it clearly, well, I think that I think it's what we need. I think it's one of the things that makes us realize that we're all not that different. Yeah. Right. That even though within the differences, you realize, and also that it's a big world and there's a lot happening simultaneously. You know, I have my, one of my daughters spent two years at an academy, tennis academy in Spain. And then, but also was traveling into Turkey and all these other places to go play. And, 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 uh, you know, my younger daughter go, will go to Europe a little bit, but I mean, for them to just, just, just open up, open up, open up. And it's not just, you know, we get in these little silos where we just don't, and we think we don't realize that there's just so many other things happening that we need to, you know, it's so good for you. I think we just need, you know, we need, it should be a mandatory thing. Like, okay, you, you go and, you know, go around and travel for a couple of months and go to these other countries. I mean, I've had the fortune to travel. Um, and that was probably the beginning of it too. I got lost on that trip actually in Geneva. So we were in Geneva, Geneva. which is a great city to get lost in. (laughs) Yes. But I got, yeah, it was, I didn't realize it, but they only spoke French. And so I was wandering around at 10 years old, uh, lost for the day. And that was a pretty scary thing. So I got, finally, I got found by a, a tax, some taxi guy. I heard my name over the, the, I was walking on the streets and I was, I was crying and I've been all, I've been walking for hours because I thought I, I missed, we were at a, we were staying in a hotel and then where the, the vehicle that we were driving was down the street. And I went, I went down and left instead of down and left, left or whatever, and just missed, missed the spot. And then just everything looked like the next thing. And before you know it, I was like across the town, but I remember, and my mom, when I, when they took me, the guy, I heard my name and the guy pointed at me, he goes, and I went, I went like that. He goes, come here. Like, he goes, he didn't speak English. And he put me in the car and drove me to the, and I arrived at the police station, right. Uh, right. Right. When my mom was coming down the aisle, it was a big emotional yeah. thing, but, but uh, another one, another one of those things. Speaking, speaking <laughs> of your name, I was thinking about this. I don't know anybody else named Laird. Like, is it a, is that a common name somewhere? Like, where does that no. come from? No. Well, it's a Scottish. It means, it means Lord of the land or land okay. landlord. It's a Scottish, Scottish name. Uh, but it's more of, uh, I think it's a description. She liked it. My brother's name's Lyon, so L Y O N, like okay. Leon. Leon yeah. And she just, I don't know where she came up with it. And uh, uh, I mean, it's, I appreciate it. I didn't love it. You know, you don't, again, when you're a kid, you don't love the things that make you stand out. But at my point, it, I mean, my blonde hair already did plenty. I didn't, I would, yeah. you could have called me mud at that point. Right, like, right. Yeah. So, so yeah, so getting, kind of getting back to that, like, um, I, again, I hadn't really thought about this, but the fact that you are, you're a world-class athlete that essentially is a non-competitor in most aspects of what you do, right? I mean, I think you may have done yeah. something with like, you know, um, other things outside of surfing, but that's such a unique thing where people know who you are, people know your accomplishments, but it's not about breaking records or like the fastest this or the fastest that. And so at what, at what point, and what was the decision like for you to kind of say, you know what, I'm about the art of this, not the sport of this. And, and where do you, where do you draw that line too? Cause I think there's a lot of things out there that are clearly art, whether it's music or I mean, even though we try to compete with music, we give people awards for it and stuff like that. I which is, I, yeah. Right. Like, I, can't I know wait you're, to see the judgment on that. Well, yeah. I know, I know you, um, I know you're friends with Eddie Vedder. And I always think of him like when they first won their like first Grammy and he basically got up and said, I don't know what this is about, but I don't think it means much. Right. Which I think at the time I thought, well, that's kind of a dick thing to say, but now I look at it and go, no, he's totally right. Like, what is, how do you, who, how do you, who determined that? Yeah, how do you was it record sold? Right. Was it <laughs> right? You right, know, right. It's art. So, so anyway, so like, where do you draw that line and what was the thinking process for you in that? Right. It was like, cause, cause sports too, I can think of a lot of sports that sort of 
can certainly be artistic. I mean, even if it's basketball or soccer or something, there's a lot of art in there, right? Mm. But there's still, there's still competitions too, where there's a winner yeah. and a loser. So yeah. just kind of your thought process and all that. Well, the, really. the, I mean, first of all, let's not get, let's not get mistaken about my competitive nature and probably not, right. probably, probably, probably not good. Like, <laughs> like not good. Like, too competitive you know, to the to the death, right? To yeah. the death. Yeah. So, but so, in, in a way, and 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 my and 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 I, what I did is I just made my own my own event, which was I thought that if I if I rode the biggest waves, the best, mm -hmm. which to just when I say the best, I just thought if I can if my performance is so kind of almost above almost beyond like a decision like you you you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna there's not really gonna be a decision there you're gonna make it be that you can do it in a way that that it's just it it's it's by itself and i just for me i felt like th that if you can ride the biggest waves the best mm -hmm. that that kind of takes care of everything like in my in our sport like i felt like for me because i go this other part is more confusing. There's judgment, there's thing, there's all this stuff. There's this, this, a bunch of other things that, that, uh, that I watched my stepfather go through. Um, I watch it and I was always confused. You were confused. Cause you'd be like, well, why that guy win and that guy not win. And sometimes it was obvious. Oh yeah, that guy definitely won. But then you had groups of people that were judging you. And I think I had, I think part of my, uh, my, uh, allergy to being judged came from being judged. Mm -hmm. I've been judged my whole life. Like if you're judging me, I'm judged for the, the second right. I walk into a building, I'm judged at every corner. I'm always being judged. Right. So in a way, I think that was it. I mean, I've, I've competed in windsurfing. I broke some European speed records and got some stuff like that. I've done paddleboard racing. I love racing. I thought that was good because it was time. You're fast. You're not fast. But when it came to, to surfing, I just felt it was such a, uh, it's such a, first of all, it's self-expression. You're expressing yourself. Like this is, you know, you, this is your music. This is your art. You're, you have, this is your, your dance, your, 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 there's a self-expression. And then the only way to really separate yourself because it is confusing how to determine who's who, what, who won and who didn't. I just thought that the, that, that being the best at the biggest was, would take care of it. Like yeah. that, that would, that at the end, that that would that would be able you could set yourself uh, 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 above the confusion in my in my mind. I thought it would be a, a, a more clear thing, and there was something about that part with the courage, right? The the courage. I mean, we have a thing that we used to do that we would be like we go to a cliff in the summertime, and then we just kind of see who would jump the highest, and yeah. it kind of doesn't matter. You can be whoever, whatever, but. If you're the last guy and you're jumping off the highest place, kind of seems to make things really clear. I thought that things were really clear when it was like that. So uh, that that was my, you know, and, and and I think I I think I combination of the what I liked. I think my my build. Um, I think everything about it made big wave riding my that was my that's my field of choice, and so. Um, I, I liked, and I liked the way everybody conducted themselves in the big surf too. Whenever, whenever the surf was big, everybody, it seemed to make everybody, um, make everything a lot more clear. Like everybody was clear and there was a lot more, people were more respectful and more polite. And there was less of this kind of other, 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 uh, behavior that happens in surfing when you get a bunch of people in a lineup trying to catch waves when the surf gets really big yeah. you know we have a saying we have a saying that somebody will fight you for a two-foot wave but they'll give you a 20-foot wave yeah. so, <laughs> i certainly you know. would yeah for <laughs> sure so so when you i'm curious like your mindset when you get into one of those waves like do you have a a process you go through is there like a mental mantra is there anything like that and then once you're up on it like is it, does time slow down for you? Does it speed up? Are you thinking about something specifically? Or you just, is it just like, there's so much laser focus on what you're, you have to do physically that like everything else goes away for you. Yeah. Flow state. Yeah. Flow state. Uh, for me, the hardest thing to do is watch. 
The oh, hardest really? thing to do is watch. Yeah, I, I get anxiety if I watch. I, if it's <laughs> if, funny. if I can't be in it, I don't even want to see it. I'll go. I'll just go away. I don't want to watch. Oh wow! So I it, for me, unless I'm done already, and then yeah. I can go and enjoy it. But if it, if for me to just observe it, I need to not observe it. I need to go and be in it. And then once I'm in it, in that environment, then I'm then I'm clear about you know, my, my, uh, you know, my behavior, my, my, what I have to do is very clear. Like I know where to go, where to be. I know what I want. I, it's like, there's all that stuff is, is, is very clear. And, and, uh, and so I, I, it's going to be, which is, which is a beautiful place. Actually. It's a, it's a place that, that I enjoy going to because of it's, it's so, uh, it's so simple, right? It's so just pure. It, it and you're and you're participating within something much, uh, much greater. You know, people say, "Oh, you know, you conquered that big wave." I'm like, conquered that big wave. That wave could make enough power to light Los Angeles. I, you don't conquer a big wave. You yeah. you can be in harmony with it. You're able to. It allows you to be har harmonious. And if you make mistakes and and don't make the right decision you you'll pay there's punishment so but so i really do appreciate that that uh clarity i you know you do the right thing you have success you do the wrong thing you you pay like yeah. i love i love a, a lot of what that what that uh represents but when you're in it when you're in the act of doing it i always say there's no beginning and no end it just it is it just you are in in it and you're not it's a continuation of where you left off and it's just being in that in that focus like you said the laser focus where you have no distractions i mean there's a there's a famous wave that i wrote in tahiti that that i talked about a conversation that i had in my head um that doesn't happen often um that particular wave did do that just because of the way the wave was and what the moment was where i was having kind of an internal conversation with myself between the halo and the horns and uh and you know and the and the and the the horns were like hey jump off and the halo was like no you got to stay on otherwise yeah. you know you can't make it because if you jump off you can't make it and the only way you can make it is if you if you don't jump off and but you could get knocked off but at least you will have tried to to stay on and and so that was the that was the that was an internal conversation i had with myself um, on that particular ride that I don't have those a lot. I mean, you, you know, it's a, it's an interesting thing because when you're riding, especially like on a giant wave, we, it's one of the few things that you can tell what's happening behind you by what's going on in front of you. Mm -hmm. And there's not a lot of things that do that in life, like where you're actually doing something and your focus is, is completely in front of you, yet you know what's happening by what it's doing in front of you. That's telling you what's what it's doing behind you. Yeah. Uh, if you the way it's drawing, you know what's you can just feel like what's in the back, uh, what's in the back there. But, but yeah, I I think that was a, you know, that was my, that was my, uh, that was my place to go to. Like I, I I that was my one. The land wasn't always cool. The house wasn't always cool. But the ocean was the most reliable place that I. I, it, it is the most reliable place that I've ever been. It, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't just all of a sudden act differently. Like once you understand what it does, it's very reliable. It's very, it's a, a very reliable place. And I think in, in, in a, in a world full of unreliable places and unreliable situations, I think it's very reliable. It's, it's, there's no, surprises a wave just doesn't come out of the shore and it just, just just doesn't you know pop up out of nowhere and it's not this and then there's that there doesn't have any there's no weird behavior that way once you have enough experience you can you you understand what it's what it's doing whether you like it or not that's yeah. that doesn't matter yeah, yeah. but it's not it doesn't it there's no just it doesn't it's it's not personal ever it's never it's never personal it's never it's never at you even though it's conductive like the, you, you get a lot of that environment you pay quickly when you when you at least i do when you when you when you have negative thoughts or you do something negative you you get i always pay fast it's like you you do something say something act in a negative way and you just i just get instant like 
instant repercussion for that. Do you have like a mental training, whether it's meditation or anything like that? I mean, obviously there's a lot of physical training that you do and there's breath work and there's other things that you do through XPT and all of that. Is there a meditative aspect of that as well or, or some other kind of mental? Well, the breath work, the breath work is, is meditative. Yeah. Probably the most meditative thing that I've been able to, to do. I mean, other than the act of doing the stuff itself. Yep. That stuff is, is puts you in flow state, which is probably one of the highest levels of meditation that you can do. Yep. Like it's, it, but the, the breath work is definitely good for, for, uh, you know, and, and then, and then, and then good, good cardio, you know, like a good run, a good bike, a good swim, a good something where you're in a zone where you're, where you're able to turn everything off. But the breath work does it like it, nothing I've ever done. I mean, the breath work is, and what do you do? It's the most powerful. What um, I mean, because there's a ton of different types of breath work out there. So for the stuff that you do, what do you focus in on? That's really mostly cool. long breath holds, right? Through, uh, you know, do a pattern, hold hold your breath, uh, for long periods of time, and then and then, uh, you know, you can do a three minute a three minute kind of three to four minute warm up, and then a three to four minute breath hold, and then a maybe a four or five minute warm up, and a five minute breath hold. And then go back and forth between those and then play and then some apnea stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll do holotropic. I'll just do some yep. heavy breathing, always on the land, never in the water. Right. So always, always on the deck, um, do some, some, uh, like, uh, hold some breath, like some hold squeezes to bear downs. I call them. They're like uh, little decompression drills that, uh, that Mr. Wim Hof showed me, yep. Yep. um, that, that, probably comes from Tumo. I think a lot of that work comes from the Tumo work um, too. I, li I like to like the Tumo stuff as well, but you know, all of the pool work we do is all really breath orient oriented too. So every, you know, all these movements are always, every movement is a breath. So you're going to do a hundred jumps, it's a hundred breaths. You're going to do a hundred this, you know, everything's a move in a breath, right? So there's a lot of things that we do that incorporate breath with work. It'd be yeah. like if you were lifting and every time you lifted, it was just, you know, every lift was a breath, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. Like that's the whole pattern all the time. Yep. And so, but as far as the mental, I mean, other than spending time in nature and, you know, I solar gaze in the morning. So I, I, I really like to solar gaze. That's one of my, I've been doing that for 25 or 30 years. What does that mean exactly? Uh, I actually don't know that term. Looking at the sunrise. So okay. when the sun yep. rises in the morning, right when it, before, as it breaks the surface, yep. you look directly into it for, you know, five minutes, sometimes 10 minutes, depending on how low the sun is. Yep. So really good for the, uh, like a circadian uh, rhythm great melatonin in yep. your retinas yep. and yep. helps your sleep and helps your you know hormones and good for the eye your eyeball and all that stuff but so a lot of the stuff that i think my 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 mental work is so incorporated with my training i don't have to isolate so much i think a lot of the things i do bring me that that uh that the benefit of that of that stuff i mean i'm all I would say I'm probably doing a lot of visualization within my sport. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm constantly visualizing um, either conditions or performance or something. I'm always, I'm always working on, on uh, that, that aspect. I think there's a lot of, uh, I have the fortune to work on, on, you know, on the mind stuff as well. That's why I think learning is an important part. I think that's probably one of the, 100%. you know, the only part of your brain that continues to develop more neural pathways. Speaking my life, hypocampus. So yep. it's, it's learning. I think that's a, I think those are, you know, I think you can meditate all you want, but if you're not interested and you're not learning and one who don't bother, you know, like, so I think it's, Sometimes things get certain descriptions and certain, you know, certain we, we identify like that's that, but, but I, I do like, I do, I think flow state obviously has some of the best value for our system, you know, and that's when you're in that, you know, nothing, yeah. nothing distract. And that comes out of a learning, right? Like it helped exactly. to have a skill that you then channel that into is so important. Right? Exactly. And I'm a hundred percent agree with, with you. I think that, I mean, I'm, I'm a fan of meditation and all of that, but I think sometimes we get a little too siloed with, like that's everything. That's everything when it comes to like mental health or mental fitness or whatever you want to call it. Right. And, and to your point, I think there's all these other aspects. There's learn a skill. There's read a lot of books and learn 
do yeah. like your mom and read the dictionary, right? Or yeah. just look it up online at this point or whatever it may be, right? It's just, it's it's more comprehensive than that, I think. Exactly. Yeah. You know, exactly. And I, like, but, and, I, and I think the pool definitely does some really good things because the water demands, whenever you start holding your breath and then, you know, getting squeezed and then you're in the, and, and then, and you have water too, I think that really does keep you kind of hyper present. And mm -hmm. if meditation is all about being present and getting rid of the clutter, nothing more present and nothing and not, and, you know, little clutter could be like, you know, can I, can I make it? Yeah. <laughs> can I make it? Yeah. Where do we draw? So the other thing I've, I think about when it comes to all this kind of stuff is I feel like sometimes with all of the hacks that everyone's trying to do, right. Whether it's, you know, it's like, I'm going to get up, I'm going to, I'm going to solar gaze and then I'm going to meditate for 20 minutes. I'm going to do 20 minutes of breath work and then I'm going to journal and then I'm going to get in a sauna and an ice bath and blah, 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 right. All this stuff. I feel like sometimes we're going down this, this rabbit hole of survival over living where it's like every ounce of energy I'm going to put into better survival or extending my life. And meanwhile, we're not living at all anymore. So am I, am I honest? Is that, <laughs> would you agree with that? And like, where do you draw that line, right? Like, where do you go? Okay. Yes. Obviously we need to eat well most of the time and take care of ourselves and do some of these practices, but at the same time, you got to enjoy your life and like do some stuff that's just fun, right. Or channel it into surfing or something. Right. So I don't know. What's your, what's your take on? Well, I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little hacked up at this point. I'm so ha over hacked. <laughs> right. I'm like, I, I, you know, I, I mean, for me, I keep saying, I, I keep hearing all this science and the blah, 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 blah. I'm just so I'm up to my chin in it. And I, I'm like, and, or give me experience. Like ultimately, like if guys want to tell me something, tell me experience, tell me your experience, tell me what it's been like and how long you've been doing it and what's been the, the benefits, you know? Yep. So, and I do think there's a couple of things that you know, that you get a lot of bang for your buck. I go a lot of, some of the things you really get a lot of bang for your buck, meaning like you heat nice, seems like there's that, that stuff is for the amount of time it takes to do it. And what you get from it seems pretty massive, like pre, seems pretty beneficial to do that. But most, all of my training is based on, first of all, making me a better person, like helping my brain be clear and make me make better decisions and be better for my kids and better for my wife, but for sport too, like to be good, to be able to continue to do the thing that I really like to, that I really want to be doing, which is foiling. Unless you're a professional workout guy, which some people are, I go, Oh, what's sure. your profession? Oh, I work out. Okay, cool. Awesome. But I hope you have fun doing it. I mean, for me, I feel like I want to have, so I, I'm, I'm definitely about, about having the, the, the fun and the being outside too. I think, I think yeah. a big piece of it is that too. I think we can find ourselves just not going outside. Like we're not going into nature, like, like, Hey, I can go here or take a walk and go, you know, again, I, 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 I'm, I'm all about fun. I'm all about, you know, like right now, my focus on with my personal, uh, you know, things I like for me with, which is the fo is foiling. I mean, that's got me, that's got me working hard between when I get to like, I'm going, I'm using that. Like that's giving me motivation to be like, so, Hey, I want to be able to foil like I want to foil. So I'm going to make sure I lift and swim and do all the stuff so that I can get the performance out of, out of my sport. So that's, but that's my objective. I'm not coming out of it out of that. My working out is my sport. It's not my sport. My sport is, but I want to do things that help my sleep. You know, I know the heat and the ice to do that. I want to help me be more durable so I can handle environments. Heat and the ice help me do that. I need to swim well because I'm doing my stuff in the ocean and I need to be strong because I'm going to crash. <laughs> so, you know, like I need that. Those are the things And I, as long as those are doing no, that, those things, I'm good. I don't need to look pretty. I'm not worried about like aesthetics bullshit. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not worried about, I mean, I, at some point I'm like, yeah, I like to be a little more mobile. So I got to keep, and you only have so many hours in the day too. So, and I, and I am fortunate that I I'm able to dedicate the the time to these things that I, that I uh, am because it's, it's part of my work too. So I'm like, okay, part of my work is to be, you know, to be, but I, but I think it's an obligation of everybody to try to be healthy so we can have a better quality of life. Right. Like, it's like, you know, so, put the priority in eating good and, 
uh, what do they say? All work and no play makes Johnny a dull boy. But at the same time, you still, you got to have fun. You know, you got to have, you got to be able to go and yeah. have fun. So when you talk about things like foiling and the, the various pioneering things you've done in surfing, whether it's toe in surfing and that, did all of that stem out of like, what was the motivation there? Was it, was it trying something new? Was it a sense of, you know, accomplishment? Like no one's ever done this. Is it just to your point, like being like, let's try something different that might be fun as well. And I'm curious to like, when do we, I think of, and I don't know how you feel about the term extreme sports, but for lack of a better term, sort of extreme sports out there, like where's the limit with some of this stuff too, right? Like, do you, is there a point where it's like, there's just nothing else we can do until we're attaching, you know, robotic uh, appendage to ourselves or yeah. something, right? You know, it's coming. are, are yeah. we there or are we there already? Is it just like, yeah, yeah we've done kind of everything we can do at this point. I'm just, you know, what's the future? Well, you, you think that, I mean, I, I think that, well, first of all, is as a, is a, you know, as, as elaborate as nature is and as exotic as it is, is as, elaborate and as exotic are the potentials to other new things so i think there isn't uh i think there is a is a is a it's i mean you know just when you think you've seen it all or done it all there's a whole new frontier that opens up i think the the willingness to to do it the interest your interest keeping you keeping your interest uh uh and being open to it and not and not just i do this and i don't do that and you know, I think for me personally, what, you know, I mean, a big driving factor, I would say probably was boredom. You know, part of the reason why I've done a lot of the stuff that I've done is because big waves aren't every day. I mean, it's certain times, certain years. I mean, we, you know, for the, for the amount, for the lack of patience that I have, I happen to, to I've happened to somehow take up something that, that is, that takes more patience than, 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 uh, than I can even describe. I mean, you can wait your life for a moment. I mean, literally, like literally wait your life for a moment. And so, uh, but that's also kept me, and, and it probably has a different effect on everybody, but that that's kept me in the game because it's not something you can just get on any day. I can't go down and buy it at the store. I can't, I can't just plan it on Friday at two o'clock. You, you, you have to, you have to kind of, pay attention be ready you don't know when it is and 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 then try to take advantage of it and then it's gone and it's gone forever and yeah. you're never going to get another one like that so there's all these things about it that keep you it's like a you know the most beautiful woman that you've ever seen that's so aloof and you don't know when you're going to see her again and where and then you go wait and you're like hoping she's going to show up and she doesn't show up and it's like it's this crazy thing like that so it's something is so unique to water sports too i think Right. I yeah. was thinking about this where even not to cut you off, but it, but it is something that I thought about, which is, you know, other things like whether you're a BMX rider or, you know, a, a snowboarder in a half pipe, like those things are static and they're there and you can just go to it. Right. Or even rock climbing. It's like, there it is. It doesn't change. hasn't changed in a million years. It's still sitting there, but, but a wave, every single one is different. And to your point, you might be waiting for one that's, coming along and you're not going to see it again ever. And it's a, and it's a variable. It changes too. And I just think that's, it's so different than other sports in that. Well, no two same on the same day. I right. mean, it's like on the right. same place. There's like, there's just, so all of those things I think keep you either you just lose interest or get distracted. Like life will distract you and pull you away or, or because you got to be a little bit of a bloodhound to keep your teeth on it and to keep, focused on it you know and part so that uh, that kind of uh, that that inconsistency also makes you have to fill the gaps so what am i going to fill the gaps with okay i'm going to fill the gaps with and then that keeps you also looking to being interested so for me you know a lot of the everything a lot of my focus has been around trying to ride the biggest waves in the world. That's been the, 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 that's been the tip of the spear. Okay. The tip is the biggest waves. Um, they're the most exotic, the most, you know, the, it seems like one of the greatest accomplishments in my, for me personally could be that I can 
ride giant waves because they're because of it's like you know it's like you're a hunter and you're trying to catch some rare you know you're trying to catch bigfoot and and you're like <laughs> is he there like where is he like oh he's over here he's over there and so but uh so so that was a piece of it i, I so from that that focus comes these other disciplines right so towing came about because my desire to ride bigger waves, right? For, it was, we were playing around and then we we realized that we could get towed on, but we had been using windsurfers to ride giant waves in the winter with 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 the wind. So we were, we, we knew power was useful. So we, but we weren't, you weren't surfing, you were windsurfing and there was a restriction to the sail. So we realized in the summer when it was flat and we were, you know, we were bored and we were playing around behind a boat, we were caught a little wave and we thought, oh my God, we can get towed onto a bigger wave. And then that's when we realized, oh, okay, we can use this to ride giant waves. So that was the pursuit. And then, and then, uh, foiling came along and then, and, and we were playing in the summer and we were played with these foils and rode these boards and they lifted up and we realized that you could use the waves energy. And then I experienced a day that, uh, Cause it, cause the toe in kind of dealt with a cap, right? So we had a, we had a limitation from manually paddling, which toe in broke through. Yep. So then, then I realized that we had a limitation with the equipment. And so the limitation with the equipment was that surface tension created too much friction. And so you couldn't descend when the surf really did get truly hundred or 150 feet high, regardless of what everybody thinks. Um, and so we went to foils. And so that's why we're on foils. I mean, the irony now is that, those devices that we believe are the tools to ride the biggest waves are also very good to ride waves that don't break as well and can ride waves at sea and can do a bunch of other things. But that's like a byproduct. It's almost like, you know, a nuclear bomb blows up, but it also makes power kind of thing. Like mm -hmm. the repercussions of that concept have gone in multiple directions. Um, but again, a lot of it was always stemmed from the pursuit of wave riding and big wave riding. So that was a, those things, those innovations, um, you know, and uh, I mean, came from that. So that's, that's how they, that's how those, those pieces uh, came into play because it was still about the pursuit of, of, of ultimately of riding waves, riding the energy of, uh, of the ocean. Yeah. So is there still something out there that you're like, man, I wish we could yes. do that. What is that? Yes, there is. There is. Well, it's it be the 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 problem is is that things become more elaborate as we go, right? Mm -hmm. So, and and to do, I mean, to do some of the next things, and and it's also more risk, of course, and and more exposure. But but the the future is one of the few. My, I mean, the future I'm pursuing that is probably going to you know somebody's going to hear it and try to pursue it too. And I hope they do. Cause I think there's plenty of room out in the ocean, but riding giant, you know, enormous surf at sea. So, um, is really, that's the frontier. Um, there's a lot of giant surf all the time out at sea. It's just, you have to be able to put yourself in the position to be able to successfully do it and then be able to retrieve yourself. So it's going to take, it's going to take, you know, more of a teamwork. I mean, we've been working on it and I have a group of guys that are, are in the, are, are, we've been developing the skill to do it. Um, and we have, we, we, we're getting, we're getting better and better and we're not far from being able to do uh, more of that, but it'll be like, you know, on some kind of research vessel, you know, enter the ocean, ride some giant seas like you only see in the movies when the big freighters are having giant waves break on them and then retrieve yourself um, after. But we're doing our own versions of that in in closer kind of more controlled uh, environments. But the the potential for riding giant oh you know giant swells in the ocean is it's it's right there it's right in front of us and it's and it's not crowded <laughs> <laughs> no i think yeah plenty it's of not space. crowded plenty but it's room. but it's real but yeah. it's a real thing it's a it's a real thing what these foils allow us to do what we've been doing on them and what we're capable of doing i mean we could we can go into the open ocean and ride waves um, I mean, we could, you, you, who knows, first of all, how far, but the speed, yeah. the speeds, the speeds we're going, and then the distances are, 
I mean, we just, I mean, for me at this point, as long as I can continue to do things that I've never done, that I'm, I'm, I'm really okay to sit on the couch and smile with the kids and be cool. Like I, I get to go out and hunt, you know, I get, I go on my hunting, hunting, hunting journeys for the, for the waves. And then I come home and I'm, 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 I'm completely beautiful domesticated. I'm, 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 a, I'm, you can, I'm just domesticated. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I can do a you know, I can pick up, drop off, go do a thing, do work around the house. But I, cause I have that thing. I mean, I've been blessed. Uh, I've been blessed to, to have that still. Cause I think that that's something that, and I've made a conscious effort to not lose that because I feel like that's the thing that gives me a sense of purpose and then brings me my, um, brings the thing I need to be for the other, for everyone else. I'm better for my children, my wife, my friends. I'm just better when I have that thing that I'm pursuing. Uh, and I think once, I mean, I think you, we have to find that, and it, and if it, it'll change, mine's continuing to continue to change, but I've also been willing to change it. You know, it's still in the ocean, it's still with waves, it still has all that elements about it. But I've been willing to to walk away from certain aspects and not have to. And I think it's maybe it's I, I wouldn't say I don't have an ego because of course we all do. How can you not? You have you're you're human, but but I would say I've walked away from things at at a time like. I didn't need to, I don't need to go to Jaws and show everybody I can ride Jaws. I don't right. need to go to things and show that I can do this. I don't need to, I don't need to go to Chopu and be like, Hey, look at me. I can do this. I, I'm good. I did it. I, 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 I mean, I have these other things that I'm pursuing that are bringing me the same feeling that, that those things did at the time when I did those things. Yeah. And the thing I want to ask you there is, is. I always think of Stephen Pressfield and the war of art. I don't know if you've ever read that book, but I know it. He talks about like Arnold Schwarzenegger was in love with the process of bodybuilding, right. Of just lit. And it was like, it really, he enjoyed the competing, but if the world were ending, he would go to the gym and like Eddie Van Halen loved playing electric guitar. And it wasn't even, if there was nobody watching him, right. And the world were ending, he would, be sitting in his room playing his electric guitar. Yes. And I think if for you, it's kind of the same thing, right? It's like, it's less about, I did that and more I'm doing this, right? Like yeah. I'm, I, the process is what's important. Right. Yes. So. And, and what I, I think what I've really come to discover, especially because I've had the fortunate that I fortune that I don't have to, I don't have to actively present to the world regularly, look at me, look what I'm doing. Cause I, I've done, I did, I have yeah. a career of that. Yeah, yeah. And so I, I, and, and I've really found that, that, uh, why I use the thing, you know, that saying, you know, if a tree falls in the forest and no one sees it, does it really fall? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, absolutely. Yeah. It really does fall. And I, and for me, I realize that in a way there is an aspect of it that is taken away when you are capturing it, mm -hmm. when you are in, when you do the process of capturing it, you do take a piece of it away. Like the little, like the little, uh, Amazonian village people believe when you take their picture, you've yes. taken some of their soul right. yeah. that that's real. Yep. That is real. That is a real thing. And, and I've, exp and, and so for me as I'm okay. If I can go do it, I can go do it in the dark. No one, I don't need anybody to see me. I, I mean, I, I pray it's nice when you have a couple of buddies. It is. I will say I go with you. If you can be with a couple of friends, yeah, but that's a community go, thing, I mean, right? That's right. That's a community. Like if you have a little uh, thing and you go together as a hunting yes. party, yes. it's a lot more fun than hunting alone. Like I can hunt alone, but it's not the same as when I, when you have a hunting party and you go together and you enjoy this experience together and then you come back and then you go, your you part your ways and you go, okay, all right, I'll see you later. Have a good one. And you have, and you shared that time, mm -hmm. but, but there is something about that. There is something about the, the, and, and people can intuitively sense it. They know when you are in pursuit, genuinely doing it instead of just talking about it. Like a, for me, cause I, sometimes I, cause work will make it and Gabby and, and I, I look at Gabby, I'm like, what am I doing? I'm just, am I talking about it or am I actually doing it? Am I talking about surfing or am I surfing? Like what, you know, because there isn't, there is a, a, you know, I'm fortunate to get to, to have these conversations and, and do things around, around it. But, but I, I, I know for the spirit 
that I really need to go and 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 do it and and I'm okay. But there is some there is some amazing things uh out there. The the potential of the things that that is it's it's yeah. It, yeah That's cool it, to hear. That's cool to hear. Yeah. Cuz like when when I look at it I'm like I don't even know what else you do, but clearly <laughs> there's always Well, the, and and I I'm so cool to have it. Like it's like it, and it's almost in a way it's a blessing and I don't want to say I deserve it because that's because no one deserves anything, but it, but I do, I am, it's almost a reward for the pursuit. Mm -hmm. Like somebody's watching and they're saying, you know what? I've been watching, you've been pursuing, you've been putting the effort in. So here's the thing that, that you, and here's the reward for that, mm -hmm. Re the reward for that. And then the way the system works, it's, that's just part of the, you know, the yin and the yang, the ebb and the flow, like the, the cause and effect, like all those things are, it's a result of it. It's like the result of the pure, genuine pursuit is that you get something. And that's the word. I love that word. It's one of my favorite words is pursuit. It is, yeah. like, it's not about, it's not about people focus on the goals all the time. And I just think I, you got to focus on the pursuit. That's, pursuit. that's it's about the pursuit. Yeah. It's about the pursuit. The goal is once you get there, you're like, okay, cool. Now what? Yes. Like that never is good. Yeah. That never is good. That's never good. Um, I realize we're way over time. I don't know how, if you had a hard stop at some point, I would figure someone. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. I'm good. I'm it's yank you conversation. Um, so, but let me be, I, let's, let's try to wrap this up. So, so you can get on with your day there. The last thing I kind of want to talk about is just your, um, your kind of other endeavors, like specifically kind of nutrition and, and that yeah. stuff that you work on, because I have to say this about myself. I love the creamer that you guys have, like, love it. And my, my wife, as my wife says, I guzzle it. Like if there is, I don't know if you can OD on this stuff, but if you can, I'm making a run for it. Like I'm, I'm, you know, if you, if you guys are looking at like your P and L and you're like, man, we are crushing sales in Whitefish, Montana. It's probably solely because of. Okay. Me. Well, I'll have to send you a case. Yes, please do. Yeah. Cause I'll go. I will a week. Yeah. Um, yeah. But so, yeah, just, just talk a little bit about that. Like kind of what got you into that? I know you're really passionate about coffee. So am I love it. Um, or maybe just espresso. Um, but like kind of what got you into that and like, and what a little bit, I think people would love to hear kind of what you consider sort of key nutrition elements to like to keep you going and, you know, well, I mean, I'll start with foundational nutrition stuff, which is, uh, I have a friend named Paul check. Who's, who's quite a, a an exceptional guy. And years ago, I mean, first of all, when you're raised in Hawaii, you have a very diverse diet. So my hey, palate as yeah. a young person was pretty exotic. Like you're, you have Filipino, Japanese, Chinese, Portuguese, and then Hawaiian, and then American. So you have like, and whatever American is food, but I'm just saying we <laughs> like the diversity yeah. of what we eat. And then we grew up, I grew up around farming and fishing. Mm -hmm. So we, there was taro, which we have poi in Hawaii and we have and yeah. then all the fruits and vegetables. So I grew up eating a lot of diversity, like, like a, a crazy diverse diet and real weird, exotic things. So my natural uh, relationship with food from the beginning was more fuel based mm -hmm. the concept that the food was fuel and it was for energy and it wasn't you don't just eat for flavor right tasting good truth the truth be known is that when you really use when food is great it actually tastes better when it has more nutrients it mm -hmm. actually like if you take a tomato that has that's real nutritious it's actually better tasting than a less nutritious one that's that's just fact but um but when you deal with sugar and all these other stuff that they put in to make things that aren't great taste better, then you get caught in that, in that, uh, in that taste world. And then you become a victim to all kinds of crazy stuff. Cause they just bury everything in sugar. Um, because in nature, sweet is okay. So right. sweet is safe. Right. So, yeah. so food has been, been abused. I've had a, I had an exotic relationship with it. Um, always ate well, like always ate good, um, basically I, I told somebody, I go, I hate to make a complicated diets. I, I eat plants and animals. I mean, it's just, that's, I'm just like that's plants cool. and animals I'm with you. and, yep. you know, and the, and the closer to source, the better, like if you can hunt it, if you can pick it, if you can pull it out of the garden better, you know, the, the closer to any of those situations better, right. As we go. Um, and then my relationship with coffee, because I'm kind of adverse to, energy drinks and any kind of chemical things, all that stuff. Uh, I started, I like coffee a lot. 
um, as I like caffeine, I, I, uh, started drinking coffee in France years, years ago, because that the quality of the coffee was there. My mom used to drink Folgers and, and you'd go to a cafe, or you'd go to some roadside mm -hmm. cafe and they'd have some clear battery acid. You drink one cup and your stomach would turn. And so I became kind of espresso educated in Europe and started drink, using it as more like energy for energy, you know, drink, drink a couple cups, you know, a couple shots of espresso, go paddle, go swim, go bike, lift, run, whatever it is, use it for energy that way. Um, and then, and then I started to understand uh, the relationship between uh, and, and coconuts, of course, are a huge part of my upbringing, you know, using it for hydration, using the milk, um, using the water for for hydration. Uh, in fact, it's the the water is the close is the only thing in nature that mimics blood plasma. You can actually run coconut water directly into an IV into your arm. Really? Uh, coconuts, coconuts are sterile. So they're completely sterile during during World War II. The, those guys, when they ran out of saline, they would use coconut to to put young young coconut water mimics blood. It's it, it it's and it's also like makes Pedialyte look like you know look rubbish. I, I used to live in I lived in St. Thomas for three years in the Virgin Islands. Okay, and we get tons of coconuts there, and we, there was a guy yeah. called the Coconut Man who we or at least we called him the Coconut Man. It was like yeah. literally in this like just intersection in the middle of nowhere, and he showed up on a specific day, a specific time with like just a truck. A full of, yep. Yeah. And he would just have jugs. Like he basically would just dump it into old, um, like milk jugs. And you just walk yeah. away with like milk jugs of literally fresh. It was awesome. Oh yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's stuff for endurance. So I started using, I use that stuff for endurance, like long paddles, long bikes, drink that, just drink. So, uh, so that's my relate. So that happened. So, and I kind of had a relationship with raw dairy. And so I just started playing with, once I realized that, that the, that, that fat was time releasing the caffeine, that was the beginning. So once I re understood, cause I love coffee, but then it's like, you kind of go through the roller coaster of the caffeine. So once I realized that, that, that the, that good fat was, was time releasing the caffeine, then it became like, I started playing with, I started playing with different fats. Uh, and because it's difficult to, to, get any really good dairy for like, let's say a product, let, you know, for people like you can have good dairy. My friend's a dairy guy and you can get raw dairy and best in the world, but to make it, you know, to sell dairy at a store, probably going to have to homogenize and pasteurize at that point you killed it. And so I'm like, uh, let's, let's all start to play with coconut, coconut, uh, coconut milk powder and, 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 and of course, turmeric and all those things. So I just, I made my own recipe and I used to share it with friends. So I had, a, I had a pretty, pretty nice, like, like I called it, I mean, I start my day on that. If, and if you drink two cups of this stuff, you could, you can run for eight hours. Like mm. you could, you could go for eight hours and never crash. You never even, never even be hungry. Like, what is it? What is it? My friends would ask me like, what is it? What is, what is this? Like, what even is this? Like, how is it? He goes, I'm not hungry. I have energy. I'm focused. And people don't realize too, that the brain is really feeding off the fat. So the brain is, is feeding on the fat. If you don't have fat, you can be caffeinated and be energized and still kind of not be mentally sharp but when you feed the brain fat that, and the mct oils from the from the coconut are brain food so all of a sudden now you have mental clarity you have energy time release i just so i had a a, a recipe that a friend took from me and said hey let me make a let me try to make a make a make one because i he was trying to figure out my you know what brand of this and what 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 I was using and what the ratios were. And he's like, it's never the same. And duh, duh. so I gave my recipe and he made a couple powdered versions. And the third one was the, my, the sweet and creamy. So that very yeah. first recipe uh, turned into the sweet and creamy. And we started just selling it online just to see, again, kind of a sharing thing. Like I'm benefiting from it. It's great. I, I heard, I heard a, a crazy statistic at one point that one of the healthiest things that Americans were doing were drinking coffee. And I was thinking, and I was thinking about the coffee that they were drinking. And I'm like, Oh my, Oh my, if that's the healthiest thing they're doing, like yeah, drinking that garbage, that battery acid with a bunch of sugar and crappy, whatever you're putting in there. Uh, and so that was just the launch of it. So that's, that's the beginning kind of the premise of it came that came that original one. And then I consume a lot of turmeric. I'm a big turmeric, uh, consumer and then uh and so i made a turmeric one because i like the bitterness of coffee a little bit so i put turmeric in mine and and uh 
and then cacao because that's the only way you get the girls you know you got to make a mocha or a hot chocolate so <laughs> but all those things came out of that so that that all that that whole line started out of that premise kind of based on that on that uh philosophy and then and then it just we built from there then then it was like okay the greens the reds the 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 yeah we had some crazy i mean we had the bars the now we have a protein creamer um as well so i mean we just started to build off of that using the same philosophies kind of whole food ingredients try to eliminate all i mean we're trying to eliminate all the bad oils and all the bad ingredients that are in every single thing that everybody's using um as a you know that's kind of our our those are our guard rails i mean gabby's you know i'm function based she's taste taste good and you know and then try to make it affordable and 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 make it something that benefits people's health and so you you feel good about it right because because i feel good about sharing with people i and i run into people that like oh, i can't even drink coffee without your thing i you know yeah. blah 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 and i'm like i'm i feel good about that because i know that it's good and i use it every day and i have all my friends and people i know are using it every day religiously so it's a uh it's one of those things that you don't there's no guilt at night you're not you don't you're not benefiting because it's you, you know people are yeah and i appreciate this about you because um yeah i come I actually come, so before this job post millet between the military and this job i ran a beverage a healthy beverage company for five years so like i'm i, I know the cpg world right and i'm really ah. interested in it and so like i really get into kind of like uh brand disruptors and like who's kind of breaking out and the, like so looking at the and i'm always looking at packaging too and like okay what's standing out to me and why you know and where's where are they being placed and all that kind of stuff right i learned all of that over that course of five years and and so that product is is one that kind of jumped out at me for all of those reasons but it's also really cool because like when i did that it was an authentic thing like it was coming from a very authentic place not a hey we want to make a ton of money and blah 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 and you know you're somebody who uh, and, and this was in your second book which has got a lot of this business stuff in it where it's you didn't just lend your likeness to some company who wanted to be like hey laird can we put put a picture of you surfing on top on our creamer and and sell it it's like no 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 this is an authentic product that you really developed and yep. believe in and are truly involved in. And I think to me, it just makes a huge difference, you know, um, that, well, I'm hope I'm hoping it will. Sometimes the good road is a little harder to travel on. Well, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, but I mean, you know, like, like, be. like, I mean, it's, it's like when you try to walk the line, I mean, it can be, and, and, and but I know for sure that I don't, it's like Gabby said to me the other day, she goes, Oh yeah. Cause you don't, you don't, the, you're able to live your like your 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 honest self. You're live to live your truth. You're able to live your truth. And I think for me, I know it's like, hey, listen. I mean, I could have, like I said, I always, I, and I shouldn't even give them the press when I say that. But I'm like, I know, I I would have had. I mean, Red Bull would have been paying me for the last 25 years, but I couldn't. I can't find it in myself to to have somebody look up to me if it's one kid to look up to me and and be like yeah you get wings if you drink that stuff it's like yeah no you don't like like i just i couldn't feel right about that and i think that that's uh you know that's something that probably came from my mother you know that that's something that came came from her like that kind of those values that that and my and my stepdad too as well like that that kind of like hey when you're I just want to feel good about it. I don't want to have no regrets. I don't want to look over my shoulder. Like I want to, like, if I got a problem with somebody, I go to their house, I go, Hey, what's the problem? Can we just work it out? Even if we don't agree or, you know, like, like, I just want to have a clear slate and, uh, and you're not going to have everything be completely perfect. Cause it, there's just, that doesn't exist, but, but at least you're clear, right? At least you're clear on your side, clear it as best you can. But the, you know, the, even XPT is, is, you know, it's a genuine, like we were doing these, this training system at my house and M Gabby's friends, like, you should do something with that. And we're like, do what we're doing it every weekend. Like, or we do it every week. We do it every day. Like what, what would we do? And so, um, I think that off that off, you know, the, the, uh, when you're authentic that way, I feel like people intuitively sense it and, and. And no matter what, as long as you're sleeping good at night, you know, it's like, you gotta, you gotta sleep. I gotta feel good about 
I, I either need to use the product genuinely, believe in it genuinely. Like I just had, there has to be certain things. And when you're ingesting stuff, when you're eating stuff and you're promoting that, that's yeah. a different animal. It's oh, not totally. like, hey, I drive this car or I wear these shirts. Yes. Like this is a different game. And, and, and people, we're not putting enough value. I watch all these incredible athletes promoting so much garbage. I'm like, you made hundreds of millions of dollars. Why do you need to, you know, promote that crap? Like, like, why do you like, yeah. like, you know, and there's a disconnect, I think sometimes from people's responsibility, like that they have a responsibility that you have a responsibility. If you, if people are, are looking at you at all, as an example, or, or, or looking for insight or looking up to you for any reason, you have a responsibility. Like you, you're going to be, because you're going to be, you're going to be responsible, whether you believe it or not you're you will be <laughs> you yeah know? yeah well it goes yeah. back to the mentoring thing right like yeah. even if you're doing it inadvertently exactly you're, you're mentoring no, it, nobody through your actions right but laird thank you so much for coming on really appreciate yeah. talking to you please keep making the creamer because i think i will like you know i'll die oh yeah well we'll send you a case <laughs> out there awesome thanks brother appreciate it thank you see you aloha thanks for listening to on the x the official podcast of the navy seal foundation and an ironclad original please like and subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. You can learn more about Laird Hamilton at lairdhamilton.com and the foundation at navysealfoundation.org. See you next time.